Our topic today is very, very important. We are discussing Christianity and culture and how the two of them relate with one another. There are three reasons why it's important and it's a kind of thing that should be done at least once a year in every church. Number one, because there are no such people without culture. Everybody has culture. You get saved in a culture. And unfortunately, most of the churches, once you are saved, we don't talk about that culture, we talk about Christianity. Now it is you as a young believer to find out this particular custom. Do I do it? Do I not do it? Am I right on that, on that count? You struggle on your own. Because the church doesn't deal with the matter. We simply preach the word. Then we leave you to struggle on your own. But I think once in a while, it's important to talk applied theology. Where you are applying the word to the things that people are dealing with on a daily basis. That's the first reason. The second reason has to do with time. In the last 10 years, 15 years maximum, there is a resurgence of traditions in a big way. Would you agree with me? Somehow, I don't know how it has come from. When you got married in the 1970s, I got married 40 years ago, it was very clear when I said I'm a Christian, people accepted me to be a fool. You know, he doesn't understand about your he doesn't. So they understand. Today, the parents are saved of the girl, the parents of the boy are saved, the girl is saved, the girl is saved, and they are still in those traditions. Am I right? In fact, they start with a funny way. They call the bishop to come at the beginning and give a devotion. As soon as he gives a devotion, the bishop is told to set aside. They call like an old Kamuze Akalejin, and he is the one to run the negotiations. Am I right? And he is doing it exactly the way the great grandfather of that Kalejin man was doing it. Have you seen those things happen? And I have no idea what has happened, but my personal belief is the devil wants to take over the church. My fear is, in 20 years, there will be no Christianity in Kenya. It's not that the church will not be there, but it will be the kind of a church that has mixed traditions and the Bible things to such a level that there is no church. And you know the word of God is clear. He says, I'm a jealous God. My glory I will share with no one. You know, the reason why you are being told to do traditions is because it brings blessings. If you have not done in there, your marriage is not properly blessed. So, you know, once you're doing there and your marriage is going well, your relatives know why. <laughs> it's because of the ancestors, isn't it? So now it's not very clear. You, you, stand, in the, you stand in the church and you keep saying, Hallelujah, the Lord has blessed us. And then your relatives say, Don't lie. Say there. Because you got involved in it, isn't it? And the Bible is saying, I'm a jealous God. So it's important that we talk about it. Because the word of God is saying the mix cannot happen. If it happens, it is Jesus who lives. Once you want in your life to have Christ and the devil, Jesus moves out and leaves you with your choice of going to hell. And so it's important that we understand what this, this is. The third reason why we need to discuss the matter, because the Bible already deals with it. You know what we are discussing is like it's new. It was in the, book, in the book of Acts, because they would go to a village, preach the gospel, and the traditions are already there. It created such confusion that Paul and Peter almost came to blows. Because Peter is saying, let them stop their traditions and take over Jewish traditions. Paul is saying, wait a minute, you Jews don't even follow you as property. And when you followed them, you are not blessed. Why would you want to ask Akambas to become Jews? Remember the story? It is in the book of Acts. They called a whole council, what we call the Jerusalem Council in the book of Acts, to deal with the subject what does a Mukamba do when he gets saved in dealing with the traditions? It's in the Bible. It's only we don't preach about it. 
but it's in the Bible. Can you see why we need to discuss it? And it's so important. I, let me begin at this level. It needs to be understood that the missionary has a question to answer. Because he came to Africa and all of a sudden decided anything encouraging is evil. Whatever is English is right. And yet that's not biblical. It's not biblical. And so there are a lot of things we do in the name of Christianity, but they have nothing to do with the Bible. So we need to be aware that what my discussion is not about stopping following uh, Kamba customs and copying Wazungu ones. It is wrong. It's not right. And we need to deal with it because the reason why a lot of us, the reason why we are going back to traditions, and you had the president talking about it last weekend, isn't it? He said the Muzungu came, he told us his culture. Now, that is the new language in Kenya. And part of it is actually true. I'm not suggesting for those who are not married, don't take me seriously. But do you know there's nothing in the Bible that suggests you have to wear a white dress in a wedding? It's just simply a Muzungu custom. And I know it because I still remember, must be 1976, in Karyoko. I uh, was, uh, was in the university and used to go to Deliverance Church, Karyoko. It was the only church then. And I still remember on a Sunday, Jokaya wedding people in Kitenge. And they got married properly. Although they also didn't give us tea. But it was, <laughs> it was done on a Sunday. In order to, I think Jokaya was trying to teach us that tea is Muzungu Kacha. You can actually buy, the same way we dedicate babies on a Sunday, you can also order on a, but of course if you are rich, you don't be going to come, give us tea. But it is, the tea is not part of wedding. Am I communicating? But they have, because the Muzungu came with it, you don't feel married until you have conquered two million. <sighs> your wife says, how can we do a wedding without two million? It is not part of the Christianity. And I wanted you to understand that it is true, what the president was saying, is true, that there are many things the church does that cannot be found in the Bible, and they are not, it's not going to help us to go to heaven. Let me say right at the introduction, all tribes have customs, and those customs come from three sources, three main sources. One source is demonic source. Fallen man works under the prince of this world, otherwise called the devil. Are we together? So there is no tribe on earth without demonic customs. Not a single one. You know, let me begin with the Wazungus. You know, you start thinking that them, because they have had Christianity for more than a thousand years, they are different. The demons are still there. You go to Europe, and you are going through floors, you discover there is no floor 13. You ask him, what happened to floor 13? Ah, that's an evil number. Now, where is that in the Bible? Have you had Wazungu do that? You need to understand, that's a Wazungu custom from demonic sources. I still remember being in Britain in 1988 for a workshop, and I, the, because I was going to stay three weeks, I looked for a church, and I was in, I was in the church, and they told me, by the way, you have a Bible study. We can come for you from the training center and you join it. And he said, yes, I would. So they came for me from the training center in the middle of the week and I went for Bible study. I still remember that discussion. It was the last week of October. And that week, last week of October, in the European customs, it's an evil week. The day is called Halloween. And Christians practice it. And Christian practices, it's just their culture. So on that day fast, all the demons are on the release. And so we are also supposed to be wearing funny things. Have you seen it? Yeah. And they are still doing it. Some of them, on that morning, even if it happened to be on a Sunday, they would have been in church in the morning. In the afternoon, they are practicing demonic. Now, you need to understand, these are wazungus. There are many, many wazungu customs that are totally demonic. The second source of customs that we practice is godly sources. The book of Romans says that what could be known of God, even before the gospel was preached, was 
visible to them through creation. Have you read that? And it's important to understand that what that one is saying, what that, that verse is saying, is that in every tribe there's godliness. It doesn't matter that the gospel has never been preached. Because God is the creator of every tribe, he has not left himself without a witness. And so that means, when you go among the Luos, do not assume all Luo customs are evil. Some of the Luo customs, the source is God. And it's important to understand that. That they are, made, they are demonic customs, but they are also godly customs. The third source is what we call human source. It's called human source because if five people stay somewhere, they create a catch. Am I right? Yeah, we've been married with Rebecca about 40 years. We have a, a, nganga, a nganga kacha. We have created ours. Maybe we eat late or eat early. And when you come and say, are you not eating? It's because we are, our stomachs are not ready until you... <laughs> and that's our kacha. By the way, it happens to be true. If you give me food at 6 o'clock, I wonder what you want to do with me. Now, but... <laughs> But there are homes where if you have not eaten by seven, there's a crisis, isn't it? That's your culture. Now, you need to understand that culture is not holy or unholy. It's simply your preference, isn't it? And some of the customs we have have no religious connotation. It's simply a way of doing things. So it's important to understand that there are those customs that have nothing to do with religion. For example, the Kikuyu eat Mokimo, isn't it? The other tribes wonder, and my friends have asked me, I used to live in Kisumu. People ask, surely, you get good food and then bad food. You mix it together and spoil it. <laughs> Why can't you allow people to enjoy the different tastes? But you know, to a muzea like me, I don't know about the younger Kikuyus, for me, when my wife keeps mo cooks mokimo, it, was a del it is a delicacy. For others, it's a joke. How can you mix food like that? <laughs> you see, it's our custom to enjoy mokimo. Am I communicating? Of course, in hotels, they call it full. Well, they call it irio, but that's uh, because they don't know kikuyu. Irio is everything. So this particular one <laughs> is called mokimo. And it's special. Now, mokimo, you will never hear somebody say, eat mokimo so that you are blessed. Or your grandmother says, have you eaten mokimo for a month? Oh, you will get a, you will get a kirumi. You are going to get a curse for not eating mokimo. Mokimo is a choice. It's a preference. And it has no religious implication. Nobody will tell you you'll be blessed for eating or kambas and modokoi. Am I right? Yeah, you wonder why I do all that work. Maze is maze. But I'm kamba will work. I'm kamba will work on the modokoi. So seriously. Because for, for the mukamba without modokoi, he has not eaten yet. Am I communicating? So it's important to understand it is you don't, no mukamba tells you to eat modokoi so that you go to heaven. Or if you call, you will not go to heaven. It's simply a preferred way. So the third, that's the third one. Now, having given you that introduction, this is not a talk. It's a workshop. I want every three people to form a group. Maximum four people. Why three? Because the middle person just moves back. The other two can talk to each other. That's how to form a group. So three, every three people, maximum four, will, will form a group. And now you answer the following questions. We are going to pass the mic. So choose one of you to become the one to report back. One of you. Have you identified your group? Have you identified your group? No more than four, because beyond four, you start shouting. Now, if you have three, you can whisper to one another. OK, are you ready to hear the questions now? OK, the first question. Please tell me where you come from are there customs that are currently being done and as far as you suggest, they are likely to have demonic sources? They are being done even by Christians, but you can't see the Bible really supporting it. Are there customs like that? Yeah, I want you to give me each person one. So no more, don't do more than three, three customs. Those customs you suspect if I get born again and I continue, nitakuwa kikwazo. Because really, if you check, it has demonic source. Is the question clear? I did not ask, is the question simple? I asked whether, <laughs> I asked whether the question is clear. 
Question number two. Are there customs which are being done sometimes by Christians, sometimes by non-Christians? You have heard of them. You have been confronted by them. Are there customs which you suspect, although they are traditional, they actually also are biblical? In other words, those customs were done by your people before the gospel, but you suspect they are biblical. Are there customs like that? The Muzungu may have said they are wrong, but when you check the Bible, those customs are okay biblically. Is the question clear? So give us, we, we want to learn from one another. I also came to learn, and I'm sure I'll learn of quite a few things. Question number three. Question number three. You have already given me the answer to question one and question two. Surely you must have a criteria you are using. Tell me that criteria. <laughs> what did you use to decide this is evil and this is good? What criteria did you use to decide what is good, which tradition is good, and which tradition is bad? The fourth question is important. Tell me, when you make decisions, and you are a Christian, you are also an African. Which of the two drives your decision? Put more complicated. Are you first a Christian, then an African? Or are you an African, then a Christian? Am I communicating? Because the two are different, isn't it? That first of all, I'm African. Then after that, I can check what the Bible says. Or oh, I'm biblical. Then after that, I can check what the, the Akambas say. Which one are you? And why? Whichever you tell me, you tell me why. You have only, you, since it's a one answer and there's no debate, you are not debating. Whatever somebody says, I've kept it. So there's no debate. So you have only six minutes to actually finish it. <laughs> so first, the first exercise is choose a secretary so that he is the one who will read the answers. And then have a minute, have a minute, have a minute each.
I'm adding another two minutes. The six minutes are over, but I can see you are not ready. Two more minutes. So it should be on your last question. I know you are not done, but even in exams, you have to finish before you finish. So, who, who will help me with the mic? We are now hearing the answers. We had another mic. I, I want one, two, two mics. One on the other corner. G yeah, both mics. One stands on the other corner so that we don't favor one side. So I hope your secretary is ready to report. We want to learn from one another. And there's nothing anybody says that is not useful. Okay. Who is going? Is the mic working? Yes. Now go to right to the other corner. Sorry? He's not hearing you. <laughs> okay. Good. We start from this side. You give a mic to somebody. A group of your choice. So, Stand up and then you say question one was this, the answer here was we go. this. Uh, question one was uh, wife inheritance. No, the question one is that uh, the, what is uh, demonic? Eh? Yeah. Is demonic. Some customs that happen in certain yes. areas yes. whose source you suspect is not God, yes. is not Jehovah. One is uh, wife inheritance. Wife inheritance, you say, when you become a Christian, yes. that's the kind of custom to stop. Uh, number two is cause of death. What is that? It, it, it is not natural. <laughs> I, I, uh, in, in some of the customs, yeah. uh, death must be, there must be a reason for death, the cause of it. Superstition. I think you are talking about superstition. Yes, 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 yes. Even when there is no evidence, yes. you start thinking it's because the ant looked you in a bad way. Yes. Okay. That's uh, a bad custom. Yes, because that's death. Now, the question number two is the, the point of libations. Yes. Uh, when the child is born, usually the, the poor libations and also the poor to those who have gone early. The, sorry. Yeah. One, those are two separate customs. One custom is when a child is born, yes. you have to pour something yes. for the ancestors to bless the baby. Yes. And then the other one, uh, you said libations and something else. Okay, that, that's what I was saying. Now the last one. Yeah. 
the one that is that is very cool is uh, when parents bless their children when the parents do what bless their children bless, bless. yes yes you mean it's bad for our parents to no, bless their child no it is it is biblical it's biblical yes oh so you are now on the second question yes yes customs that are done traditionally yes. Yes. but they should continue yes okay blessings of children rastri is that uh, the, the the way you are thinking initially is african christian the way you are the mindset of uh, how you are you an african first or a christian first no okay that's yeah. the fourth question yes yes okay initially you are group is your group are saying you start from the african christian <laughs> so that group you don't bother with the bible until you know where you are as an african okay we have had okay here I like the frankness. Yeah. Okay, my name is National Tieno. I'm representing this uh, wonderful group here. Yes. The first question is concerning uh, if where we come from there are customs that we, you believe that uh, is demonic. And uh, the first response was uh, in a ceremony, one need to pour a little wine down for the ancestors. That's and what he called libations. Yeah. That one you are saying when you become saved, you leave it. Yes, yes. Okay, next. And then uh, the second response is that uh, where we come from, once one is married, you build a house for yourself. And before I move, uh, you move in the house, you must sleep with your wife first in that house so that you are going to be regarded as husband and wife. How will the others know whether you did? <laughs> No, no, don't answer me. <laughs> don't answer me. So you are saying when you're a Christian, nobody else should dictate when that special thing happens. Yeah. So if you, are, if you are accurate doing it because of the ancestors say it, you are not a Christian. Yeah. According to that group, you are not yeah. a Christian. Mm. Okay, now go on. And then uh, the third response was uh, slaughtering of a goat for a certain purpose. Uh, I, uh, for example, like healing or uh, reversing a curse. Anytime you slaughter in order to bring, to do the curse or to bring a blessing, that slaughtering is wrong. Yeah. Whatever the reason. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, question number two, if there are customs that uh, we believe is bi biblical. Yes. And uh, number one, according to our group, is uh, dowry giving. Number two is a wedding. So, <laughs> according to your group, yeah. before the Muzugu came, we used to sell our girls. Yeah. After the Muzugu, after Christianity comes, we still must continue selling them. Yes, we yes. have a studio. Yeah. Now, the next one. <laughs> the next one. Okay, the third response are uh, father blessing children. And then. Oh, uh, just like the other group. <laughs> The third question, uh, the criteria we used. Yeah. Uh, number one is because they say they are pouring to the ancestors, and yet we as Christians, we believe they are dead spirits. May I summarize that? Your criteria is anything done to the spirits rather than to Jehovah, mm. that, that's what you will check. Is yeah. this custom being done to honor God or to honor the spirits of the ancestors? If it's to the spirit of ancestors, that makes it the wrong one. Yeah. So the first criteria is who is being honored by that yeah. custom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, the second criteria. Uh, the curse uh, remaining once uh, slaughtered, uh, when we fail to slaughter a cow, and uh, biblically we believe that Jesus died for us all. Okay, the shedding of blood. Yeah, the shedding of blood. Yeah. Shedding of blood when Christ's blood was the final blood. blood. Anything where you have to shed blood yes. to get a blessing or prevent a curse is wrong. And the criteria for that is the death of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, number four, uh, salvation. Salvation first. Oh, what do you mean? You, are you first? I'm um, come back. Oh. Oh, is, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it is uh, prior to salvation. 
uh, East African first, then after salvation. After salvation. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Before you are saved, it's your customs and traditions yes, first. Yes, yes. So you are an African first. African first. After you are, you become saved. Christian. First. Christian first. Then African. Okay. Yeah. Different from the other group. Thank you. Yes. I think you are done. Yeah. Can we clap for those two groups? Now, you are supposed to have found somebody by now. Praise God. Amen. Um, apart from the ones which have been discussed, um, we... Question number, number one. one. Makumbusho, whereby one died maybe a month ago, or, or, or two five months, years. Yes, then you are invited for another ceremony to remember that person. And then slaughtering and pouring of yeah, just blood. Just a moment, when we understand your group. Mm. Are you saying, my mother died quite a bit of time ago. Are you saying if I remember, if I talk about remembering how, how good my mother was, I'm sinning? No. What, what? I'm, I'm meaning yeah. is uh, remembering your mother, See. slaughtering maybe a goat, and uh, pouring blood in remembrance or honoring her in that manner. Oh. Not just talking about So there's about nothing wrong that. with remembering my mother. No, it's there's not There's something wrong. wrong with doing a ceremony. Yes, and the things what about that if are that involved. Ceremony, what yeah. about if that ceremony is planting a, a cross? Okay. <laughs> the ones which I know are the ones whereby you find you're remembering your grandmother or whoever it was. You are slaughtering and pouring blood and doing things that are not in accordance to God's ways. So if that ceremony, traditional mm. ceremony, is baptized by you don't slaughter, you put a cross, does it become better? No, no. You, you cannot oh, anyway, put your group did not discuss. <laughs> let me not, not, let me not, you are supposed to be represent your group, yes. so I'm, I'm being unfair to you. I Go know. to the next question. Um, okay, and another thing was uh, the shaving of hair when if, if someone dies, I have to cut my hair uh, as a symbol that that person has died. A very common custom. Mm. Uh, you are saying that is demonic. For me... Um, Not for you, for the group. Uh, for our group. <laughs> yeah. For our group, yes, we consider that... Uh, demonic because we the source is not the Bible. If it's not the Bible and it's not um, That's a criteria being, now. Yes. Now, so you have answered the question of criteria. So yes. you are saying next time we hear your relative has died uh. and you go to Ingo and you come back without your hair, <laughs> we know you are a bacteridian. <laughs> According to your group, anybody who cut the hair because somebody has died is actually a bacterider. Because that is from demonic source. Okay, go on. Mm. And then, um, I think the other points have been mentioned. Number two. Criteria, uh, okay. Yeah, now, now good customs. Uh, circumcision, which... Of girls. Uh, okay, of girls and also of men. You know there are circumcisions So you are saying the circumcision of girls is a good custom? No, we are at number two circumcision mm. is good but there are circumcisions which undergo some practices that accompany it that they disqualify them from being good like the ones which akina abraham they did it moves from being good to being bad for example those that involve pouring of blood and uh, using maybe now, oh, animals circumcision pours blood that's no. what it's called, circumcision. No, I'm saying on animal, maybe, oh, yes. Oh, not the, not the blood of the boy. No. The, <laughs> the blood of a goat. Yes, or if, any animal. If the boy is circumcised, yeah. and then to do with the, that, you also pour chicken blood, mm. the blood of the chicken yes. shows you are not a Christian. Yes. Okay, we have understood yes, you. Because there is VMMC that is done, yeah. but blood is poured, yes, because when I cut my body, blood must come down. But now the other one, it is accompanied with other practices that are not godly. Then another thing was the wedding and dowry, of which it had been mentioned. Then the criteria that we used are the Bible just, examples. Just a moment. Are mm. you saying... Mm. 
that if I'm a Christian and I want to be wedded in the Kikuyu wedding style, I don't have to come to church. Because the Kikuyu wedding is biblical. So why bother coming to uh, Deliverance Church and both are acceptable? Are, are you getting what they are saying? Because we are now looking for customs that are biblical, that are okay, although they were traditional. She is saying either wedding is okay. No. Um, okay, then what we are us. saying, <laughs> yeah. the, nini, the practices that are also, like we saw them in the Bible, we saw dowry payment in the Bible. Not that, uh, okay, I don't know how I can respond to the fact that a Christian should choose between the traditional and the, the church wedding. Um, I'm sorry, that one I, I can't you, The group never discussed that. Yes. It's because you told us, you told us uh, dowry and weddings. So I was not, dowry I had had. My worry was, what do you mean by wedding? Um, are you saying traditional weddings are okay? If no. you didn't discuss, it's okay. No, I, I didn't uh, specify between traditional or Christian okay. wedding. I so just dowry, say... So dowry is your point? No, both. There is wedding and there is dowry payments. And they are both okay? Yes, Whether for Christian us. or Kamba? That one we didn't discuss. Okay. <laughs> and then number three... Your criteria? Yes. We were using the Bible examples. So the Bible is our criteria. Yes. And the other criteria? Um, criteria? The Bible. Only the Bible. the Bible. yes. Okay. Are you, uh, are you a Christian African or an African Christian? Um, okay. According to how we discussed, we, were, we considered the example of uh, you, you want to wed, but you'll find... No, no, no. no, no. First of all, answer the question the, simple. No? Are, you a Christian <laughs> are you a Christian African or an African Christian? Christian African. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, do we have somebody on this side? Yes. Over here. Oh, oh, we forgot in the middle ground. Okay. Bana Sifiwe? Yeah. My name is Samuel Maina Kimari. I'm a Kikuyu. <laughs> Allow me to say that because... But uh, your group is not all Kikuyu. Yes, I am. But uh, we discussed uh, based on uh, some of the things that we picked are uh, actually based on the Kikuyu tradition. So I'll quickly mention uh, number one on the issue of uh, practices customs. that are not uh, that you do not consider Christian or a demonic. Um, number one is the pouring of the native muratina, which has been mentioned by a few uh, who spoke before me um, to appease the, the dead. I don't believe, or rather, we don't believe that uh, this is biblical and uh, is a culture Num that we two. consider demonic. Number two. The question was... Um, no, no, not question two. Yes. Another custom. Another custom. Uh, we only discussed one. You only oh. got one. <laughs> invoking the names of the you. dead. Yeah. Invoking the names of the dead persons, relatives who have gone ahead of us uh, in the name of uh, attracting blessings or, or to avoid curses. So again, that is number two. Are you talking about when I'm walking and uh, I hit something and I feel pain, I shout my dead mother, that's a wrong custom. <laughs> you have said invoking... So, the some, of these, some of these things, because yeah. we've practiced them over and over, it is now in us. So the, the question, or the, rather the incident of uh, um, shouting the name of your dead person, I believe is, subcon or rather in, is unconscious. But you are saying the source is not... But the source problem. is because of probably the training or the, the way you were brought okay. up and... Uh, is a, is what example did you give? Because you don't like mine. Now, which one? <laughs> what example did you give of invoking the name of the dead? Say with their traditional uh, functions, you find uh, uh, certain things that, where you have to invoke the names of these persons, believing that they carry your blessings. You are now asking for details. You said it's Kikuyu. What kind of ceremony? Would it be? I haven't attended a minute, so I may not cite uh, actual so examples. So you, you might want to withdraw that item. I do. <laughs> <laughs> because you are not committing to any, any particular. Uh, can you see he's not giving us an example? Because you leave us confused. So every time you mention your mother, you think you have sinned. So we need to be clear what does invoking the name actually mean. But if you didn't discuss it, that's okay. Got the next question. So the next question was a good um, custom. 
traditions or practices that are uh, practiced today and we think uh, are good. And uh, we only had one example, which is the dowry. And in this, uh, this based on um, examples from the Bible, like... Uh, no, you'll come, the, that is the, the third question. The third question, okay. Yeah. So you only mentioned dowry. We think no, so uh, uh, dowry the should, uh, be, you should continue, should uh, continue. being practiced. Now you can go to the third question. That question was what? Criteria. The criteria, the criteria that you used, again, uh, everything is cited from the Bible. So that is a criteria. So Anything you are telling that people was practiced in the Bible, we consider it good. Anything that was uh, not practiced in the Bible is being practiced today. We don't consider it as you know, uh, proper. You know, the, in the Bible, Jacob always I invoked Abraham's name. So if Akikuyu invokes Mogawakeviro's name, it should also be okay. <laughs> if the criteria is Bible stories, yes. then obviously you can find a story for almost every Kikuyu custom. Yeah, that, that becomes an open debate. Yeah. <laughs> We in, need fact, to discuss. One, in fact, that's the argument that Kenyatta uh, uh, that, 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 that was being used last weekend. That they are telling us to stop them, but they are in the Bible. Complicated. Now, what, are you a Christian African or an African Christian? That group. Now, that question, I believe there are people who sat like we are seated today, uh, uh, probably before our constitution was, uh, was done. Reason being, for those ones who are, of us who are married, you are either married under CAP 150 or CAP 151. If you look at CAP 151, I'm not teaching law by them, I'm not a lawyer, but if you look at it, it, it is called the African Christian Divorce and Marriage Act. It is because rather, the people who, who were wedded using the African uh, Christian Divorce and Marriage Act are Christians who are Africans. But if you look at the Muzungus who are going for Cap 150, which uh, is called, uh, simply called the Marriage Act, uh, simply because people are not able to agree even back then whether we are Christians first or Africans first. And but, that is why well, that there is are two now provisions. History. This group must decide. So for this, for our group, <laughs> yeah. for our group, we believe we are Christians first then and, then, Africans, and then Africans follow. Okay, now we have this side. Now, you are not allowed to repeat anything that has been said so far. So, if everything you have been, you have been said is what you said, say, those people copied us. Ours are very original. i um, Dennis Waitara, and thanks for this topic. We had it a while before with my friends, and they are also here, so we are learning more. So, for the first question, customs supporting demonic sources, Ours first was number one, wife inheritance. Now you are repeating. Okay. And for the old men negotiating for the rest of the people. Old men negotiating yeah, for, for a girl. Yeah. On behalf of the family now. Okay. That is coming now to marry. That's unbiblical. Yeah. It's okay. I go on. Then sleeping with dead spouse. That is certainly demonic. Yes. Okay. Now for <laughs> customs that are biblically okay, traditional medicine, but not all, there are plants that we can use for medicinal purposes, but not from various sources. Okay. Yes. Then, still on the same question, family gatherings or family, family get-togethers, these are bibil biblical. They, 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 are, they are traditional and biblical. Yeah. Go, keep going. Are yeah. you not giving us a criteria? Yeah, criteria, criteria to determine what is good and bad. Speaking counsel, seeking counsel from the spiritual leaders, church elders. Are you saying yeah. all this you have been telling us, mm -hmm. you consulted the elders? No. <laughs> you are saying the criteria for deciding what is demonic and what is godly are elders. No, for what we are, what you are saying, yeah. it's one of the ways. One of the ways. The criteria for back, determining yeah. is talk to the bishop. No, 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 no. Yeah. Seek counsel apart, other than the rest. So that you can ask. You can seek counsel from a diviner, Modomogo. No, 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 no. So you tell us we, where to seek counsel. Okay. Explaining, explain 
explaining it very well is that you should seek counsel from a spiritual leader yeah. apart from reading the Bible and doing every other thing that is inclining to what God wants. So the criteria is the Bible. Yes. But you also wanted to add seeking counsel. Yeah. But now I confused you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Then now this the side. Last one. The last one. Yes. In making decisions, uh, uh -huh. what drives us is we are first a Christian, then cultural. But in that, you'll find that being the Christian, sometimes the culture overwhelms you. And you are saying when you when culture overwhelms the Christian, yeah. that is a demonic source. <laughs> okay. Now, hey, and remember these people at the front. The next one, you bring the mic here. Yes? Yeah, uh, I'm Maina Kibe. I represent a wonderful... Only additions. Question one, addition. Okay, what we've done, we have the same rights. Maybe we can add on the practices that may not be acceptable. Like, for instance, among the Meru. We, I have a brother here from the Meru. Uh, they are saying that uh, when you go for ratio at Meru, the very first thing you have to present on the table is a bunch of a bundle of mera. A getondo of mera. That's <laughs> not acceptable. Yes. Another one? Among the among the Kikuyus, uh, the elders will ask for a uh, honey or a sali. And then you are asking ourselves, why would they ask for honey? To make it beer. Is for, yeah, for making beer. Again, another practice that may not be acceptable. So I can answer two questions at the same time. Because we are saying ratio is acceptable biblically, but no, rash, some of the, yeah, is the already pain, covered. You are now repeating. Yes, I'm saying, I'm answering this, uh, another part of the question. Yeah. Where we are saying it is acceptable, but some of the practices in it may not be acceptable. Okay. Now we go to circumcision. Which practice in ratio is not acceptable? Uh, now are they asking, uh, they're asking for the honey and also for the mirror. That is okay. what we've cited okay. in our groups. Question, question two, a good custom. Oh, now, no, you have already answered that. Actually, I've answered that. The same, uh, we can okay. say the same about circumcision. C okay, criteria? Uh, the criteria we're using, again, is the biblical practices that were practiced in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. Okay. Yes. Now, are you a Christian first or an African? Actually, we consider ourselves to be Christians. Christian Africans? Christians. Uh, oh, you don't, you're not even Africans. <laughs> okay. Okay, Let, give it here, give it here. Give the mic. Yes, uh, my name is Ian Gatere. I must say we are learning a lot, so thank you so much for this memo. You are thanking these people. Oh, so you, yeah, yes. No, no, we need to thank all these people oh, who have been okay. talking. Thank you for coming. Thank you for teaching. <laughs> no, no, they have been teaching us. Oh, ah, yes, thank I'm you also, for teaching. I'm also a, new, a student. Okay. So let's thank them, you yeah. and me oh, need to Yes, thank, them. thank you for teaching us, yes. Yeah. Thank yeah, uh, he has come to Egerton. He has preached a few times. I love this man. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, among the practices that have not been uh, cited, there is one in Rorashio. It's the last last cer ceremony. It's called Gotinia Kiade. Yani unakata. Kiade. You guys will understand. Ask somebody there. Ask uh, your neighbor. Yes, Kiade. I, I understand there is pouring of blood with yeah. that. Uh, so, so you are saying that's demonic. Yeah, that's de demonic. Okay. Then there is also another one. Yeah, Johia Moana. Yeah. Uh, Akoho Akoho for, for, for the child. Sim toto apewe pombe. Ni. You drink on their behalf. <laughs> yes. You drink. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You drink on their behalf, and then we also have uh, something called Kiama. In that, for you to be uchukuliwe kama mwanaume kwa hiyo society, you have to bring a goat, ichinjwe. Eh, and you are saying that is demonic. Yes. When yes. you hear a man here has joined it, you know he has chosen to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. That's the message of this group. <laughs> yes, yes. This group, they are apostles. Yes. Uh, yes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yes. On now you are doing very well. This, that had not been mentioned. Yeah. Well done. Yes. Well uh, done, all of you. Yes. We are good. Clap for <laughs> yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are we through now? Yeah. Okay. On question two, on yeah. something that is good, yeah. we have uh, going with gifts when you go to see the parents. That's also good. You don't go empty-handed. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, and then the criteria that we used, we used the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that, that was our, I'm telling you this group, where don't joke, my friend. We used the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, unaskia tu yo kitu wapana. Unacha. Yes. Okay, now this group, can we clap for yeah. this? Okay. Where is it? Okay. Only additions, my sister. Yes. Um, additionally, on um, the things that we consider demonic, um, in, in Kamba, there is something called Ndeo. The Ndeo itself is not the issue, but the aspect of it. We were asking among ourselves why you have to take goats that are odd numbered, because you have to take either three, five, seven, and kill one to be eaten and pour the blood. You cannot buy meat, by the way. So we felt it's not, it's not good. And then... Uh, but that's now for our campus, yes. Yes. They and now then, know that the day we hear they have a third in there, we know they want to go to hell. <laughs> and then we have uh, the aspect of a baby being shaved by Guka, why you have to travel all the way from Nairobi. What about Nairobi? if Guka happens to be a Kinyozi? <laughs> that is a different thing because this one is specifically is doing it, it uh, not as a kinyozi, but as the grandmother. So oh. it's either they will take the baby home or the mother will come to shape the baby. And we felt to con assist us, we can as well do that if it's all about shaving. So we felt there's a tradition there attached is a to meaning. it. What we are suspicious about is if there's kinyozi in Nairobi. Is, your grand, is the grandmother of the child an expert Kenyozi? Or is exactly. there something else behind the shave? And that be something else is not biblical. Exactly. Okay. And then um, we also talked about Boriaki, but someone has, has talked it, about yes. it. And then customs, we, we feel that they are biblical. Is visiting a new, baby bo uh, a new baby with gifts. We felt it's still African. And it's still good, it's still biblical. In other words, we people should continue it. <laughs> okay. And then um, criteria used, we, we were questioning the motive behind every tradition. And that is how we classified them. Well, what, then, what did you use to question? The criteria is the thing you used to question the tradition. The motive. Why, oh, were, motive. why, why were Africans doing that? Why are they doing oh, that? Oh, that's a new one. Of. Can we clap for them? Yeah. So it's even if you are doing a biblical custom, if you are doing it for a wrong reason, the motive makes it wrong. For example, if you are uh, taking the baby for the grandmother to see the grandson, that's like, okay, it's biblical. But if the reason is so that they can pour saliva on their chest, now that's become now a different. The motive is the issue. Well done, group. And then we are Christians, then African. Okay. Now, our time is gone. But no, the reason why I'm, I'm allowing you is because you are wiser than me. The, when you are put together, you know more than me. And we came here to learn, isn't it? Are you learning? Yes. Yeah, that's why we giving you time. Now, you happen to be the last person. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, our group, we are composed of Luos and Luyas. <laughs> uh, please tell me if there is a custom in your tribe with the demonic source. Uh, a number of them have been said. Uh, one is shaving of the hair during death. The other one is speaking to the dead. For example, tunapereka mtu amekufa nyanza, amefika na ivasha, amekata kuenda. Unamzungumuzia, unamuambia... Moses, nani amekukasirisha hii deliverance? Ako kwa hii gari? Kama wako wacha atoke. Unaona, unamzungumzia. Do they talk? Yes. No, they are dead. Finally, they tell you, and if you do it, the vehicle moves. Yes, if you turn them, somehow they go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what you are saying, if you are participating in that, yes. you are actually choosing to go to hell. Yes, you are choosing okay. to go to hell. I'm uh, sure all lawyers have heard. Okay, number two, uh, those ones that are okay, hostility to the mourners, we usually feed people when uh, there are ceremonies, and that's okay. 
even if that means leaving the family penniless. No. Again, the motive comes in here yeah. and the extent of doing it. Okay. Yes. Uh, adoption of deceased brothers' uh, children, I think that is uh, okay. That's okay. Or rather, helping the bereaved. Yes. Helping the, the children of a widow. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. As long as it does the not... Actually, it's in the book of Timothy. It is there. Yeah. As long as it does not extend to the widow, that's okay. <laughs> in other words, help the children, but ensure you don't go, go to the, the mother. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the other one is honoring the elderly. Uh, it's both biblical and Christian, and uh, uh, Lou yeah. and Luya. Yeah. And then the criteria we used was the word of God. The word of God, it has it all. So the word must check every custom yes. that we have. Yes. And okay. you are, are you Christian first? We are Christians first. Okay. Yes, now, I know we have not finished, but unfortunately, I know you want to go home. Some of you came here early in the morning, isn't it? You don't know how to go home? Okay, one more group. <laughs> okay, the group behind you. you. Pick the mic. Professor is going to tell us what that group said. Uh, I'm Jambo Nyote. Uh, in my group, we, have, uh, we did consider a few things here. I will not repeat all, but I will just mention a few. One of them is the, those that the customs that are demonic. Uh, one of them is about the FGM. FGM is a traditional custom yeah. that must be stopped when you become a Christian. Exactly. Uh, Johia Mwana was mentioned. There is also something about the widower. The widower in the in the uh, the, the man the Abaluya, yeah Abaluya culture, where the widower, when the lady dies after separation. He has to come and sleep three days in that lady's house after burial. That is a demonic culture. And I Just a moment. Let's see again. We divorced. We divorced. Then the, the divorcee, my former, my former wife, dies. Uh, I must leave my, no, my, my new wife. Yes, exactly. Come to the dead woman's uh, house. Uh, exactly. And you sleep there three days. For three days. Yes. Not two and a half. Not two and a half. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you are saying, <laughs> if I actually see you going back there, I know you have chosen to go to hell. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That is actually demonic, and we agreed that in our group. Uh, the customs that are uh, godly, I will just mention a few. Uh, this one is. Uh, Praying under a mogumo tree in times of disasters in a kikuyu was godly. Because when there, there, there was hunger. Remember, was, uh, remember, Professor, you are telling us yes. a traditional custom mm -hmm. that we need to continue with. Exactly. And one of them is which will continue praying under a mogumo tree. Under a mogumo tree. So oh, there's no need of a church. <laughs> because or we have a choice between a church and a mogumo tree. That we go to the Moguma tree, yeah, but we go to the church because they are available today. Just and a moment, pray there. then you have now contradicted your group. <laughs> you are saying traditionally we pray the Moguma tree, the day you get saved, you stop that and you come to a church. You pray, but if the church needs to be at a tree, it doesn't have to be a Moguma tree. No, 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 <laughs> okay, okay, go on. Uh, the other one was uh, when, when the Kikuyus prayed, they prayed facing Mount Kenya. And that was to signify that Where God, God, is. God exists in the highest part of the land. And Mount Kenya to them was the highest peak that they... So we should continue. Not we should not we continue. We shall check whether this church is facing Mount Kenya. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, yeah. some of the traditional culture were godly, but they are... They, they can't be godly if we are going to stop them. They were godly then. Oh, sorry. We want what is godly now. We want what is godly we now. We want a traditional custom <laughs> that even after you become a Christian, you should continue. Uh, then then we, are, we are actually mixing up. Okay. So because you withdraw that one. about a culture yeah. that was godly. 
No, 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 no. Those are many. Yeah. We only wanted customs that are from biblical source. Mm. Therefore, even after you discover the Bible, mm. you continue with it. So if you tell us facing Mount Kenya is godly, mm. we will make sure all churches face. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that not. We are so you, about the, has, with, the group has withdrawn that yeah, exactly. one. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, the Korenga Kiande. Uh, although it has been. It's uh, on the other side in another group. Your group says continue. No, we say about it is it was it, it signified the the cut then, cake then. But we want a custom which now it, not it is wrong for a Christian not to continue. Today, today, yes. Are you telling people now whoever is seated here and has not cut the shoulder to go and do it? <laughs> is that what you are saying? No. Then we withdraw it. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Uh, we use uh, in the, the criteria we used is uh, we we were relating the Bible, yeah. and uh, we are actually basing our argument on the Bible. And uh, we are Africans. Fast. Fast. Okay. For Thank you very much. Can we clap for all of all the groups? <laughs> My suggestion is, since some ideas have not come out. Next Sunday, please ask somebody, what did your group say so that everything is actually reported outside the group? That will be an important thing. I want us to look at my notes, but they are not going to say anything different from what you have said. At the introduction, I'm saying according to the Cambridge English Dictionary, culture is the way of life, especially the general customs and beliefs or a particular group of people at a particular time. According to uh, lifescience.com, culture is the characteristics and knowledge of a particular group of people encompassing their language, their religion, their food, their social habit, their music, and their arts. Culture itself is neutral and even positive until it conflicts with the scripture. Am I communicating? It has positive uses, identity. There's nothing wrong. You know these days I'm meeting, I'm meeting uh, young people and they ask them, where do you come from? I'm a Kenyan. They have created an impression like it is evil to be a lawyer. So there are many lawyer children who don't want to be lawyer. You ask them, what is your name? I am James Excellency. Now, the idea is to hide that he is a lawyer. Something is wrong somewhere. The Bible cultures do not require that you hate your culture. Are we together? You, you know, you, you, we, and that's the message that all groups were giving. You do not cease to be a kikuyu when you become a Christian. What happens is, you first of all now become a Christian, then you use the Bible to check all kikuyu customs, and only the wrong customs are dropped. And because the lawyer will also do the same, there will be customs that the lawyers do and customs that you do that are different. And both are still going to heaven. Am I communicating? So do not require a kikuyu who goes preaching in lawyer land. Must not ask them to, to start to stop eating in Goho. They, they can continue even if himself does not like. When he goes to preach in rural land, and he doesn't know how to separate the, 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 the bones with the fish. He, they don't have to become kikuyus. I wanted you to understand that. You can be proudly kikuyu on your way to heaven. The only thing is, all kikuyu customs stand judged. So you first of all check all of them. And any that is in the first, in the second and third category. Remember the three categories? You are allowed to continue. And that means you'll be different from other tribes, and yet we are still going to heaven. Are we together? So it's important to understand. That needed to be understood. The idea of condemning everything Luya is not from the Bible. The Bible never did it. So it's not, it's, a, it's somebody who is trying to be, and that's what you need to understand. Let me also tell you something very interesting. You are not tribal because you speak Luya. You are tribal because you think Luya's are better than Kikuyu's. Are you seeing the difference? So that some of you do not even teach your children their local language. They can speak English and Swahili, 
they, 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 they don't know Luya at all. He becomes a doctor and he is posted at Magomere or some place in Luya land. The grandmother comes and this guy is actually called Wangia but can't answer. He requires an interpreter because there was a useless father who never taught him <laughs> Luya. Am I communicating? You need to understand the more languages you know, the greater is your spiritual influence. I used to work for Shell, and for a number of years, I was in the regional office and was covering 10 countries. Four of those were French speaking, and I discovered the weakness of knowing, not knowing French. I'm in, I'm in Madagascar. I normally witness to people in the hotel. I try to say something. I have no idea. She can't speak English. I can't speak Louis, uh, French. We are just looking at each other like pictures. Until I'm in Uganda and I'm back in my elements. The spirit was available in Madagascar, but the problem was my language. <laughs> Am I communicating? So the more languages you know, the better. If you know three languages and your child knows two, shame on you. Are you thinking your child is daft? That you, you can afford three languages and they only learn two? There is something wrong. Oh, that way, look at it. The teacher teaches them Swahili and English. So we don't congratulate them, you for them knowing English and Swahili. What did you teach them? You had them for five years and they still don't know your local language. Am I communicating? You know, the other day my, my, my wife who is a lecturer did a, an exercise in her classes. She teaches cross-cultural communication. And she told, she asked people, if you died in Mombasa and you, are, you didn't leave a lot of money, so you are, the people are having difficulty take your body to your rural home. What would you advise? What would you write in your will? What would they do? And so everybody says, oh, one, one answer says, no, 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 no. There is a fridge in the mortuary. Let them continue gathering money until it is enough. Then they can take my body back to Ingo. Another one says, what for? Even in Mombasa, they are, they are cemeteries. Why bother? Just put me in the ground. So everybody was Talking, do you know she told me? She knows the class. She discovers every Luo and Luya said Waendele. Then she asked them, what about six months? Even one year is okay. Until they raise enough money. <laughs> when it's a Kikuyu boy, he says, what for? Why are you harassing people? You are dead, bury somebody as simply as possible. Those same children, the Luya does not know a single Luya word. The Kikuyu doesn't know any Kikuyu. Their tribal beliefs entered them in English. Am I communicating? <laughs> <laughs> it has, your child will not be less tribal, even if you don't teach them your local. You know, they sit there listening, you know, the grandmother is dead, and you are talking about it. And you are talking in English. That's the way the beliefs enter, isn't it? You are talking about rules, and you say how hopeless they are. The child is only three years, but they still listening. So they will not speak vernacular, but they will be tribal. Am I communicating? So we need to sort out that matter. The Bible is not against you having a background. The Bible is against using that background to determine what to do. Am I communicating? And that is something that is very important. It's a pity I don't have enough time to, to go deep into this, given the time. But I, I have said we are all created by Jehovah what every tribe, there is no tribe created by the devil. The devil uses God's uh, instruments. And that's why you need to understand there will be godly customs, evil customs, and what I call neutral customs. The two extremes in proclaiming the gospel when you go to a new tribe, the two extremes uh, in, in, in another culture, according to Curtis Peterson, is that the two extremes in proclaiming the gospel in another culture are number one, that we proclaim the gospel without adopting the Western cultural baggage that we carry around with us, or that the evangelists change what God has made absolute in an effort to reach the lost. In other words, how do we separate the content of the gospel from the cultural wrapper from where we come from? I hope I'm communicating. There are two things you have to deal with. Some people... You know, you, if you got, and by the way, we, I used to, we used to think um, it's a Wazungu thing. I happened to be the founding chairman of SITAM Mission Board, 
And that's the thing we have to deal with. We are going among the Redires, among the Boranas and Gabra. And I was, as I was preparing our missionaries to go there, I reminded them, the problem of the white missionary are now our problems. You go there as a Kikuyu, and the Gabra are doing things you have never heard of. And you condemn them on the basis of Kikuyu. That tells you you are not a Christian. If you are a Christian, you value your things, but you don't colonize others on the basis of your culture. Am I communicating? So that when you find somebody is doing something different, as long as they're different, is their way, their way of life, and it's, and it's not unbiblical, allow them to continue the same way. So it's important to understand. For example, nakedness is unbiblical. But how to cover the nakedness is not determined by Kikuyus. So you can cover yourself with skins on your way to heaven. Don't, don't tell them, no, remove the skins. There's nothing holy about cotton. Am I going to get in? <laughs> There's nothing holy about even a skin can see you cover nakedness. The biblical thing is to cover nakedness. Are we together? And that's those are the things we are saying were the things that confuse the Muzungu. Proclaiming the gospel either with the rapai on or the other extreme is ah, you have been told the wrong of the missionary. And now Sitam is sending you among the Gabra. So you start allowing them to continue in their way of life because you don't want to judge them. Are you getting the point? Where you are allowed to continue exactly the way you came. That's not possible. Why? The Gabras have demonic customs that must stop. And even if they reject your gospel, it is important that they understand the gospel even if they reject it. Do not, do not soften the gospel so that it's acceptable. Am I communicating? So do not, and that's what we were doing. That's why we are going back to those traditions. Because you want to make the campus happy. So I never did in there. Now I want to go and do it so that everybody can accept me. They can say I'm a proper mukamba. That we are saying no. Whereas you should not use your culture to colonize others, you must tell them some of the things they have been doing are demonic. And by becoming Christians, they must stop. Are we together? And that's really and when I'm talking about them, I'm talking about you. You need to ask yourself, what are things you are doing and need to stop? Any culture must not judge the Bible. The Bible must judge the culture. Are we together? You cannot say, but this is the way we are doing it. I don't know why the Bible said that. All cultures are combinations of good and evil. Therefore, must not judge the word, not but be judged by it. The preacher must always remember that he has a prophetic role to perform as well as an evangelistic one. Indeed, the prophetic task is part and parcel through the preaching of the law of the law or the evangelical task. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of the Kikuyus, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It must cease to be a Kikuyu mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, not what Gekoyo and Mobi said. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So you cannot claim to be a Christian and fight to faith into your tribal cocoon. Because your tribal cocoon has the good and the bad. The Bible has only what is good. So you must be ready. And that's something you need to understand clearly. The moment you become a Christian, it must be clear that you'll have trouble with your clan. When you discover you're having no trouble with your clan, maybe you and the devil are going the same directions. So how could you ever have a problem? The moment you are going against the devil's direction, so you need to understand. And there are many Christians who are totally involved in their customs. So they wonder, how do you suffer? Me, me, we are okay. My father and I, and our grandfather, we are okay. Please check. There are possibilities that we are not challenging them on customs that are not biblical. They say, bring your child so that we, we do certain things to your child. You say, but it's just doing. Me, I don't believe it. But if she believes it, my friend, if you don't believe it, how come you're allowing your baby to go through it? Am I communicating? I had a story the other day of a baby that in Nairobi that was crying. And cried until they started ringing home. They are new, there's a new couple. 
they, they, they ran home. The boy ran, the, the, the mother, the, the girl rang the mother about the crying. The mother of the boy said, don't worry, I understand the crying. I'm coming. So the son says, what, what is the crying? It is because of the name you are using. You called him the wrong? Don't worry, I'm on my way coming. In the meanwhile, the mother of the girl who was born again, when he was told and told the mother was coming, says, wait a minute, I will not even wear any clothes, I'm coming. Now, in other words, she wanted to arrive here before the traditionalist arrives. So when she arrived, she said, so the baby is crying, yes. How is the breastfeeding? No, I'm breastfeeding, but you know, I'm a new mother. Milk is not coming out. And the baby is crying. Yes, what do you expect the baby to do when you give them no milk? <laughs> if your no milk is coming, we'll use milk, cow milk, dilute it, and give the baby. The baby started taking. By the time the other mother came, the baby was no longer crying. So there was no, there was no chance. <laughs> Am I communicating? Because the baby was not crying from spirits. It was simply biology. Am I communicating? <laughs> so you need to understand the moment you become a Christian, you have declared war against your cultural beliefs that are not biblical. And if you don't, please accept he is a jealous God. You can enjoy these blessings and at the same time enjoy Christ's blessings. To enjoy Christ's blessings, you must cease to have the blessings. And this is the right time for me to mention. One of the things that is really eating to people is the need of parental blessings. I would like you to go to, the, to, to Genesis and listen to Jacob blessing the children of, uh, the children of, of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And I was very, very impressed the other day when I read, he says, God bless these children. Jacob knew he is not a source of blessings. He is only a vehicle. But in our customs, your father is not a vehicle of blessings. He is the source of blessings. So when he tells you, I want to bless you, Come with a little monatina. Come with a little alcohol. Since you want to be blessed, so you have to give him. Because he tells you you cannot bless on, an, on a dry chest. I'm not communicating. So I want you to understand, biblically, blessings are not from parents. Blessings are from God. The parents pray God's blessings on you. And I know my age mates will not like me for this. Because you know we like threatening. You know, <laughs> If you don't visit me, Utaona, <laughs> my friend, relax. There is no, you are not a source of blessings. You know, it, it is true, your mother was a vehicle that carried you, but the room where you are born is called a delivery room. Am I right? In our time, we are not allowed to enter. But these days, I hear men enter. But at that time, we are not allowed in. But I hear it is called a delivery. Do you know that's a very good name? To remind mothers that are here, you are not the, son, the source of your son. You only delivered. Now, so <laughs> it is important to understand. You are child as a child of? Only you? It's important. So your child can be blessed with or without your blessings. You know the Bible is very interesting. Sometimes, and I'm dealing with that because it was mentioned several times. We use the same word traditionally and biblically. We assume it's the same. It's not the same. In Kikuyu, we say, Papa wa modo neither wa keri. In English, your father is a second God. Have you heard that? And it's true in Ruoland, it's true in Luyaland. So that when you annoy your father, you have a kid annoyed. That's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. The Bible says this in Exodus 20. You thou shalt not have another, including your father. So it's very important to understand. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but because we don't talk these things, people are saved, but they are living under the fear of their father. The father calls, and you run there. You better have to break your leg. Some marriages are now, that's not our topic today, some marriages are suffering because the boy is obeying the father. And what they are saying, the wife, is nonsense. But because the father says, it must be done. And this is a, a saved husband under the slavery of the father. So that he does not lose blessings. My friend, you are not a Christian. 
a Christian knows that the Father is not the source of blessings. God is the source of blessings. And it's very important to understand. So you need to understand that. So let me be clear. In Ephesians, the Bible says, children obey. What about in Exodus? Honor your father and? Why are different words used? Because when you are a child, you don't even understand honor. You must obey. The moment you become an adult, God does not expect you to obey your parents. There is nothing in the Bible that requires an adult to obey the parents. But in, in our culture, hallelujah, even if you are 70 and your parents are 90, you must. That's, that is culture. You know, that's what I told you. The difference is so big because the Bible is telling you if you are 70 and your father is 90, you still must respect them. You must honor them. But you are not required to obey. But I can see the way you are looking at me, you are finding it strange. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. When they crossed the Red Sea, the children of Israel, went to the other side, God wanted them to go through the Red Sea in order for them to trust him, isn't it? Do you know the Miriam formed a saw a choir, they praised the Lord. But a few kilometers later, they started rebelling, isn't it? Then they actually refused to go to Canaan. God said, any adult who went through the Red Sea and has rebelled, all of them will die in the desert, isn't it? But any child will go to Canaan. But remember, if you are a teenager of 19, you also refused, isn't it? But the, let me tell you something interesting. If you are 19 years, 11 months, 29 days, 23 hours, and you refuse to go to fight, you did not die in the desert. It was, it was blamed on your parents. Since your parents rebelled, it's not you. It is you are, because you are supposed to obey you are. But if you are 20 years and three minutes, you died in the desert. Because in the Jewish culture, anybody below 20 was a child. Anybody above 20 was? And God wanted people to learn everywhere that once you're an adult, you cannot use your parents as a defense. If your parents tell you to do wrong and you do it, both of you will go to hell. Them for telling you, you for obeying them. Both of you burn at the same temperature. It will not, <laughs> it will not matter at all. It will not matter at all that you obeyed your parents. And God wanted it established. Because one of the reasons why we are going back to our culture is because our parents are telling us, am I right? When you are an adult, born again adult, that will not be a defense before God. God will hold you accountable. You are supposed to tell your parents no, but in such a way they cannot uh, uh, accuse you of dishonor. For example, you are, a, you are a girl here, you are not married, and your parents want to do those traditional things in your, for your wedding. You tell them, when it comes to my wedding, that will not be done. So who are you to tell me? You tell them, the Bible tells me, even if I do the wrong by obeying you, I will suffer as you suffer. And you know, Papa, I'm saved. I'm not a joker. Because of course, if you're a joker, you know you're joking. But if you are somebody who walks with the Lord, the other girls will have their, you will go without it. And you tell his relatives, you know, you know, Atieno is a useless girl. You please understand her. Those things you will not do. You, you understand her. She is lost in this Christianity. But you will go without doing it. Am I communicating? So for you to allow your father to do wrong customs for you, God will hold you accountable. Are we together? And it's important to understand that. So it's important to understand that as we go on, the key word they normally use for this challenge is called context contextualization. Contextualization involves an attempt to present the gospel in a culturally relevant way. The discussion about contextualization are connected to discussions about nature of human culture and separation of the two. Dan Gillard offers a full definition as a, as a tool. A tool to enable, in so far as it's humanly possible, an understanding of what it means that Jesus Christ 
the word is authentically experienced in each and every human situation as within that culture. Such a tool is necessary because while the human condition and the gospel remain the same, people have different worldviews, which in turn impact how they interpret themselves, the world and the things they say. Yet scripture offers much support for the concept of consolidation. It is on display even in the ministries of Jesus and Paul. Paul will talk in such a way, he goes to Athens and he finds them worshipping an unknown God, isn't it? He approaches the matter from their context to show them Jesus. Are we together? But finally, they have to stop worshipping their unknown God. And that, that is what we are calling contextualization. But contextualization is a very risky affair. Zeta says that contemporary Christians must avoid two pitfalls regarding contextualization. One is called obscurism, and the other one is syncretism. Let's look at 1 Kings 13, 26. When the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, he said, it is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord. The Lord has given him over to the lion, which has moored him and killed him as the word of the Lord had warned him. I know you know the story now, what has happened. A young prophet hears from God. But he comes to an old prophet, maybe to a father figure, maybe to a cultural leader. And the cultural leader, do, do you understand? You know, I know these things longer than you. So he stopped following God to follow the old prophet. Am I right? In the process, he ended up becoming a meal for the lions. You don't want to become a meal for the lions. So watch out. We must respect the elders, but not at the expense of us going to hell. Are we together? It will be very, very important that we, we understand that context. Obscurism occurs when a person confuses the gospel with some idea or expression external to the gospel. For example, a person might believe that certain music or genres or evangelistic methods are essential to the gospel. When you make something that is not the gospel to be part of the gospel, you are securing the gospel itself. And the culture can be many things. What about syncretism? It's the opposite, the opposite error. It is the mixing of Christianity with something else. You are fully Christian and fully kikuyu. Muchanganyiko, mahalum. That is backsliding. That's what's going to be. In an attempt to contextualize the gospel, some Christians might uncritically accept the religious convictions of their culture. Should they believe and present these religious convictions in a manner that distorts or denies the gospel, their guilt of syncretism? And we can go on, but if I go at that speed, it will be difficult. You know, what I'm suggesting to you is to speak God's word to a group of people in a way which which considers and adapts to the context without losing the message. Within the church, Cornelius usually refers to the process of asking, speaking God's word to a group of people in a way that uh, considers and adapts to the context. But some traditions will still be outrightly condemned. There's no way you can go to a tribe and you don't find something that needs to be condemned. For if our tradition can take us to God, did Christianity then have to come? at the cost of many missionaries dying. Is there any need to reach out to the threshold of unrich people groups if already what they are doing is okay? The reason why we have been sent to go to all tribes is because every tribe has missed the mark. Why did people die if it was not necessary for them to hear? However, we must not adopt the missionaries' culture either. Whereas you must condemn the culture, some of the aspects of our culture, we should not adopt the missionary's culture. I repeat, we are not expected to adopt white culture. For Africans should not remain cultural and spiritual Africans while dumping a bit of Christian ritual into a religious practice. For example, you want to remember the dead, but instead of uh, killing the chicken, you put a cross. Or be, be, instead of a diviner coming, the pastor comes. When you, a pastor goes to supervise a traditional belief thing, that is syncretism. Are we together? Yeah. You look at what was the motive behind it. If the motive is suspect, that culture cannot be Christianized. It is the Bible that must judge the culture, not the white man's beliefs. To the missionary, to the white missionary comes and sees you do a certain thing, 
he asks, why are you doing it? He must bother or to understand before condemning it. You cannot condemn something just before you understand it. Look at the difference between African thinking and biblical thinking in many aspects, whether it's family or is in marriage. And um, I want to look at Hebrews 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, in penetrating even to the di dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. In other words, you must go to a custom and look at the attitude because the Bible, the Bible wants to go right to the dividing that is required. If the word, if the word is the power, is powerful, then it is, it is stable and eternal as well. God in his magnificence is the author of scripture and he surpasses time culture and whatever else has come from your culture. First Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. So when you are traditionalist, you think you are lost. But it's important to understand if you are a Christian, you are willing to be called foolish. So culturalization is needed as you approach any culture, but it must be guarded against the criticism of criticism. How do we avoid both of them? Bian Kato, who was, a, who was a, when I was in the university, he used to be one of our speakers in the 70s, who was the general secretary of the Jericho's of Africa. Bian Kato answers the question when he says, it is God's will that Africans, on accepting Christ as their savior, become Christian Africans. Have you, are you now getting the answer? Africans who become Christian should therefore remain Africans wherever their culture does not conflict with the Bible. It is the Bible that must judge the cultures, not the missionary who has come to preach. Where conflict results, the cultural element must give way to the Bible. So we are not African, we are not African Christians. We are Christian. That's why we, we say we are born again. If the first time I was born, I was born a Kikuyu. When I'm born again, surely I cannot be born a Kikuyu. It's a waste. It's a waste. So if you are born a Kalejin first, if you are born again, you are not born a Kalejin. You are born a Christian. But then because you used to be a Kalejin, there will be certain Kalejin things that I knew. But first and foremost, you are a Christian. That's what we mean by being born, a, being born again. We have been born different. And, um, and we are trying to see, as I go towards finishing, how we are, to, um, we are going to deal with these many customs. We all use uh, the book of Acts chapter 15 in trying to deal with it. I referred to it some time back, and um, I'll go back to it. But let me first of all read um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. We are now talking, and as I'm going to add finishing, since we cannot deal with all customs, how are we going to approach the customs? And verse 1 says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Are you getting it? That is in the past. But in these last days, including 2019, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. So please hear this. In the past, we were Kikuyus, we were Kalejins, we were Africans. But in the last days, we cannot continue doing the same. So you must ask, who is the source of your belief? Is this ancestral spirit or Jehovah? So if the Kikuyus used to face Mount Kenya, there was nothing wrong. They didn't know better. But when Jesus comes, he tells you in John, chap, John chapter 4, talking to the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman was, had a mountain just like Mount Kenya. So he says, we, we worship in this mountain. Ah, Jesus said, it is true. We worship in Jerusalem. But a time is coming and now is when true worshippers will be known how. They will not bother geographically. They will not worship in mountain or in Jerusalem. 
they worship in spirit and so when you find a Kikuyu going to Mount Kenya and believing he is closer to God, you know he is on his way to hell. Because Jesus already said the sign that you are a serious worshiper is geography doesn't matter. Am I communicating? You know even you think about that Kirinyaga, but even people have in their houses what they call an altar. And that sometimes the beginning was okay, but now they think that their prayers cannot be had in the kitchen. So you must stop cooking to run to the altar. Just tells you, you did not listen to Jesus. Jesus says he can hear you in the kitchen, just that he can hear you in the bedroom. The moment you have certain places you call altars, you are an Old Testament believer, not a New Testament. Because he's saying it was okay. In the past, we actually worship in Jerusalem. But the time is coming and now is where the kitchen, God will be there. Am I communicating? God does not hear us because we are in this beautiful as a place. Even when you are driving, I don't close your eyes, you can talk to God. You can call to God and he'll do a miracle for you. Does that happen? That's what we are learning. So you can see clearly when you start having Holy Mountain, Mount Elgon, or another place, and we are using it traditionally, we are lost. The Bible is saying that was okay then. It's not okay now. Verse 2. But these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. It, it is in line with Jesus' teaching, even if in line with the Old Testament. And we need to understand that the Old Testament, and we need to talk about here, we are not Judaists. We are Christians. That means many of the good traditions that are aligned with the Old Testament, we must stop them. I'm not communicating. That's why we are not Wakorinos. Wakorinos wear the turban. And you ask why? Because they are trying to be like, uh, like uh, Aaron. Aaron wore a turban. I also must bear a turban. But we are learning when you become a Christian, you don't do that. That's the message of Acts chapter 15. Paul, Paul wanted the Jerusalem Council to answer. Must we copy Jewish customs? He said, no. You don't have to copy any custom. The blood of Jesus was enough. Am I communicating? So one of the ways of ensuring is to start understanding very, very clearly that we cannot do things because of the Old Testament. We are New Testament. And I want to show you as one example. The Kikuyus, in fact, I told my children, I used to live in Kisumu, and I told them the Kikuyus used to inherit, wife inheritance is a Kikuyu custom. But you say, no, that's a Luo one. No, it's a Kikuyu custom. I grew up during emergency. Many people were dying. Whenever a woman died, she was taken over by the brothers. It's a Kikuyu custom. We call it in Kikuyu, Odabio. Because you see, once your husband dies, you are unholy. We're not Dahu. But when you sleep with, your, with the brother of your husband, the Dahu disappears. The sin disappeared. Now you are holy. So a woman... A Kikuyu woman whose husband has died and has not been taken over is having dahu. Am I communicating? Do you know, unfortunately, that custom is also a biblical custom? That's, that's why I told you when people say, because I'm taking example of the Bible, you are losing it. There are many things in the Bible which you are not allowed to continue. Who has the mic? Who has the other mic? Yeah, read for me 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. Because you see, we, when we are Christians, it's important to understand. I still remember Barry Smooth saying, and I've never forgotten. The Old Testament is interpreted by the New Testament. I'm not communicating. That's why you cannot understand the book of Hebrews until you read the book of Leviticus. Because the work of the book of Hebrews is to interpret Leviticus. So Hebrews says that those things we were doing, all those Levitical customs, were all done at the cross. When Jesus says it is finished, all those sacrifices were finished. And it's important to understand, to understand, to understand that. If you don't understand that, you are going to be a Christian and you'll be carrying your traditional customs because they are in the Bible. And that tells you, you are not a Christian. Now read, read, read loudly. You are reading. 
You can read what is on the board. That's what they are trying to say. First Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verse, verse 39 from yes. NIV. The Bible says, A woman is bowed to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes. But he must belong to the Lord. With that verse, it completely broke the Old Testament inheritance. Am I communicating? Can you see how clear it is? So the, the, the reason we don't do wife inheritance is not because you'll get HIV. It is because it's unbiblical. It was there in the Old Testament, but it's not accepted in the New Testament. And that is the trouble for dowry. Because when I pay dowry for a woman, I own her. In Kikui we say, ratio. It is money to buy a wife. That's the meaning of the word. That's why I'm always confused when I clear Christian when for ratio. Because ratio is trading, buying. And if you, do, if you doubt me, please take facing Mount Kenya and listen to Jomo Kenyatta explaining dowry. Dowry is a purchase price for a woman. And the woman, the moment your husband buys you, there are three consequences. Number one, even if your husband beats you, you can't run away. And if you run away, your father will return you back. Because if you stay there, he must return there. Am I communicating? Just like if you buy a car, then the dealer comes for it, he must return the money, isn't it? Because the, the traditional dowry, whether Luyas or Luos, is a purchase price. First problem. Second problem. When you buy, the dowry is not given by the boy. It's given by the clan. Are we together? So you now don't just belong to your husband. You belong to your clan. So the moment your husband dies, unless your father returns money, you stay in your husband's place. And you are taken over automatically by the brother without new dowry. Am I communicating? So wife inheritance, you don't have to pay fresh dowry. Because that woman is owned by that new clan until she dies. Am I communicating? That's, what, that's the basis of our inheritance. It's dowry. It's the basis of why we inheritance. Because you don't want to lose your income. You paid it. <laughs> My communicating. So if you, if you don't agree to be married by one of the brothers, then your father must be ready to return the dowry. Are we together? And that is very, very, very important. The third thing about, about dowry, so that you understand, is that if you, according to 1 Corinthians 7, 39, you are free to marry anyone. As long as he is, the Lord. It means then you should not have been, no dowry should have been paid. You cannot claim you are free and you still owe my money. Am I communicating? So, First Corinthians 7 that 9 cannot work for people who, who are paid dowry. And some of them are seated here. It doesn't work because you are bought by your husband. So, if he dies, don't say you are free to marry anyone. What happens with the money and the cows? I'm not communicating. So it's important. But I, you know, it is so clear in the Bible, but because you don't debate it, we leave it there. We say, even in the Old Testament, they were paying dowry. Third point. Do you know the verse that they normally quote during ratio? By the way, I hope you now know that's the wrong word to use, isn't it? You are supposed to go for odoni. That means in law visit. You are not supposed to go for ratio. Because when you say ratio, you are informing all of us you have gone for trading. When you go for Udoni, you can even go with gifts. But they are not purchasing anybody. They're just giving gifts, and that's Christian, isn't it? Now, so that's need to understand. But let me, let me tell you the, the problem of this, of this dowry. Go to the New Testament from, from, from Matthew to Revelation. Does the subject of marriage, is, is it discussed? Is the marriage discussed? It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, it's in Luke. Is in John, is in the letters of Paul, is in Peter, is that in the Revelation? Yeah. Marriage is discussed. But in all those discussions, there is no discussion of dowry. What does that tell you? That somewhere as the Old Testament ceased, dowry also ceased. So when you tell me you want to do dowry, 
you are telling me you are an Old Testament, you are a Judist. Are we together? Yeah, because only in Old Testament is there any way? Don't worry. But I want to tell you something that is now back to Genesis chapter 24. Because that's the one people, people quote. Genesis chapter 24, it is Isaac getting a wife. Am I right? But Abraham does not go. He sends a man called... Hey, I'm checking your Bible knowledge. Who goes? Eliezer. When he goes there, he reaches there, and I don't want to repeat the story, you know it, in Genesis chapter 24. Finally, he's in the home of the girl. They say, please eat. He say, no, 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 I can't eat until I know whether my journey is blessed. Is, am I repeating it correctly? Now then finally, he talks about what God had done. And he asks, am I blessed? He, he is told, what you have said is of the Lord. We cannot say no. As soon as he has been given the girl, he walks outside and starts bringing gifts. Some for the mother, some for the brother, some for the... Is that dowry? No. <laughs> I, people keep quoting it during those ratios. They even say, you, were, you know, even in the Old Testament, there's a ratio. You read the chapter. What is dowry? Dowry is money demanded by the father of the girl, given by the father of the boy. And it was never available in Genesis 24. Abraham gave gifts. He never gave dowry. Am I communicating? So that, so that I don't know where, you know, when, when you are used to a catcher, you even look for something to hold on. Don't hold on Genesis 24. It doesn't help you. Look elsewhere. Am I communicating? So it's important to understand that, that when you talk about dowry, now, but that's not the only thing. In dowry, whether you talk to the Luyas or Luos or Kikuyus, there is a process and every time has a mean, everything has a meaning. When you ask for honey, it's not for sugar. It's for alcohol. Am I right? So, it's important to understand that you cannot be a Christian and start giving gifts in line with traditions if you don't believe in their traditions. The other day, a friend of mine, whom... Um, whom Mrs. Kemani knows, but I'll, so I'll, I'll hide him so that he, she doesn't discover who I'm talking about, was going for, uh, one of our agents, was going for dowry negotiations. I just I hope her husband was not there because you know who I'm talking about. Now, and uh, when they went, they were told in that tribe that we, they want to be taught the things that are required in dowry. So the people started talking. He said, no, my, my friend, who was the spokesperson, said, please stop. We are born again. We do not believe in those items. We have come with a gift, and it has no name. We beg you, please, accept our gift, but do not read. Say, no, 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 no. We, you are not from our tribe. You need to understand. He says, don't waste your time, because even if you read, we will not give you a single item on that list. So the negotiations were getting tougher and tougher, until some, the spokesman for the girl said, can you go outside and discuss it further? He says, please. Before we came, we had saved ourselves. We discussed. What we are telling you, even if you said outside, we'll come back and say, same thing. Until finally they said, maybe we should move out. So if, you, you, if you want to move, it's okay. So the owner, the visitors are the ones who remained inside. <laughs> and the, 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 the girls, people went outside. When they went outside, they realized the, 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 these negotiations are dead. Are we together? So they started arguing. The, the, the advisors of the father of the girl said, no, no, no. These people should go. Then the father of the girl realizes it's had his daughter's wedding at stake. So he finally fired the spokespeople. And they came back inside. When they came back inside, the father himself was talking. So he said, you, you don't seem to agree with us. What did you actually want? My friend says, I'll repeat myself again. All we are saying is, we would like you to allow our son to marry your daughter. We have come with a gift. And we wanted you to accept the gift the way it is. Okay, what is it? So the, my, my friend went, removed the, you know these days you don't carry cash. Other the thieves will come at night. So it's a banker's check. So he came, produced the banker's check, the father opened, and discovered it was more than half a million. He looked, I said, he looked at the man, looked at it, and I said, hiya, totiko in your we did <laughs> We did, not, we did not know that the way you have. Kumbe, they have wasted hours because people believe dowry will give them more money. 
Then they now discovered, if, they had, if you had paid all the items, it would have come to about 300,000. But they were now getting almost double what they could have gotten. A gift was bigger than? Am I communicating? And they said, they, he just walked from where he was, came and embraced my brother, and they sang to Tenderesa. Now, you need to understand. <laughs> you need to understand clearly. Am I communicating? You cannot enter into those things without... You know, some people argue. In fact, I, yesterday I was doing a seminar, seminar like this in a place called Moiga in Nyeri. And, they, and it, was, it was a pastor's conference. And the pastor said, me, I'll not give alcohol, but I'll give the money they can buy alcohol. I say, that's interesting. If you know it is alcohol they are buying, God knows you know. <laughs> the fact that they are the ones who went to the shop means you, also, you still bought? Am I communicating? So you cannot give people money to do something you don't want them to do. Am I communicating? So can you see, if you don't start the deep, you start thinking that the cultural thing is biblical. Am I communicating? Are you getting the point? You need to go and study 1 Corinthians 7 that 9 clearly to see if you believe it, it completely destroys dowry. You can't do dowry and still believe because dowry is a payment. And you know, sometimes they are very interesting. They say dowry never finishes. I want three million, but I'm agreeing to accept whatever you have. Then you say quickly, yes. That means your wife is on loan. Can you imagine looking at a loan every morning? You wake up and you see a loan. <laughs> I know some of you are in that category, but you need to understand clearly, clearly, my interest is especially my age mates. It is totally wrong for a saved man to ever sell his daughter. If, you, if it is gift, that's Christian, isn't it? But for you to be the one pricing your daughter, your, price, uh, your daughter is invaluable. What does that mean in good English? She has no price. So there's nothing you can ask. If you ask for a three million, it means your daughter is three million. There's nothing you can equi equate your daughter with. Am I communicating? Your interest is not even money. It's to wonder, can this boy look after my daughter? Am I communicating? That's what, and whether he pays dowry or doesn't. And anyway, the dowry is not his money. It's his father's, isn't it? So you are looking at the wrong things. What should be worrying you is, is that boy saved? Does he know the Lord? Does he really love my daughter? Am I communicating? And that's not proved by a dowry. Some people say, if I, you, know, some, you know, the other day I was counseling a young couple. And the girl was the one demanding she must be bought. You know, I used to think it's boys who don't want to pay. It's girls who want to be bought. He says, Brother Nganga, you know, when he pays dowry, it means he values me. Does it? He just does a harambe. You need to understand clearly, dowry does not prove you love the girl. The other way is to know whether the boy loves you. Am I communicating? Not by doing a harambe. So it's important to understand many of the things, and my time is up, um, so I have to find a way of, of, of finishing. But let me finish with this. First of all, Acts, read for me, Acts chapter 15, verse 19 and 20. Because the answer to this question was actually debated in Jerusalem Council, and the reasons were given clearly. Um, can you now stand up and read? Verse 19, Acts 15, verse 19. Acts 15, verse 19. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Interpreted, now keep standing, you do not have to follow any Jewish customs. Are we together? Yeah, you are not a Jew. You are a lawyer, stay a lawyer. Are we together? That's what the Jerusalem Council decided. Go on, verse 2, verse 20. Verse 20 says, Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols. Up to there. Here they are getting a criteria. How to decide. In other words, don't follow Jewish customs. Follow your cultural customs except the following. How am I going to know which ones not to follow? Any custom, the verse is saying, any custom that relates to idols or worship of other gods must be stopped. Are you getting my point? And that is 
quote that group over there said, motive. Any custom, even if it's a good custom, but the motive is to please the ancestors. You must stop it. That's what they are being told. They can do any custom, but not custom that relate to other worship of other gods. And that's what you need. For example, you ask yourself, why is a child being shaved? They are being shaved so that they can get blessings. And because those blessings are not in the Bible, they can only come from the alternative of God. What is he called? The devil. Obviously, most of the customs talk about the ancestors. And you do not want blessings from there? That's why you not shave the baby in the same way. The same way, when you die, the, your relatives are supposed to cut their hair. That is something that any Kenyosi can do. But like somebody explained, cutting the hair is a sign of communicating with the dead, communicating with the dead that you do not want to be, you do not want to be cut by them. So you cut the hair to please them. Modern people do not cut all the hair. During the ceremony of cutting, they cut that a little. So that when they come back to Nairobi, you cannot tell the hair was cut. You know the quantity is not the issue. <laughs> as long as you cut, you allow your relatives to cut, it means the demonic spirit saw you doing it. So they are going to bless you. Am I communicating? You are protected, you are okay on your way to hell. It's very important to understand, <laughs> to understand that the idea is worship of idols. Are we together? Maybe I on that one, can you hold one finger? Oh, God has given you many fingers. Can you go another finger to Deuteronomy 18? Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, 11, and 12. Somebody else can read it. Or put it on the wall for anybody to read. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, 11, and 12. In talking about the, these things to do with the dead. Read it loudly. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft. Are, are all those African customs? Every one of them. And you are being told when you do them, that's why the canonized were exterminated because of doing these things. Go a little on. Or cast spells, or who, or who is a medium or spirits, or who consults the dead. Are you hearing? The moment somebody dies, you must allow them to die. I've written this in my book, in my book, um, in my book, The Secret of Contentment. There's a chapter on death. And according to Christianity, the moment somebody dies, the Bible puts it this way, to be absent in the body, immediately is to be present with God. That means if you died last week, when you bring your body here, we are not bringing you. So I find it funny when people keep, the pastor keeps talking about this person. He's not here. He left. Because the moment you are absent in the body, you are present with the Lord. Three problems. And they are still done in the church. It means that even if the body doesn't come here, it's okay. Because you are not dealing with the body. Why do we bury the bodies? Not for the sake of the dead, for the sake of the living. They call it in psychology, give them closure. You want to see the body go in so that you can live anew. There is nothing you do in a barrio that benefits or hurts the dead. That's Christianity. Are we together? They are gone. So, where, unfortunately, the African belief system is that the dead do not go. They enter the spirit world and then they hover around, isn't it? In Luoland, when you, are, when you are a girl and you die before you are married, they are very afraid because be, they don't know where to bury you and so you become a roaming spirit. So a father with, a, with an unmarried girl is very worried in case he dies. But that's not Christianity, isn't it? When you die, my unmarried sister, you don't become a roaming spirit. You go to the heart of Jesus. Am I communicating? So it's important to understand our difference. The Old Testament is not what I'm quoting. I'm quoting the New Testament. It's important to understand, to be after in the body, to be present with the Lord. So the first thing is, the body, we bury the remains. We bury the former house. Bill Graham put it in very good language. He wrote, 
One of these days you'll hear that a telegram is dead. Don't believe them. I've just changed locations. Am I communicating? And surely a few, a few months to becoming 100, he finally changed locations. Christians don't die. They change locations. And why they are not there, like I used to live in Kisumu, in Minimani, I used to have many visitors. Then I moved. It was a very good company house, but nobody, none of my friends now goes there. Because they were not after the house. They were after. So once I'm gone, there's nothing. The same thing. If you bury me in a stone or earth, it doesn't help me. Are we together? So you know some people, when they are walking next to the grave of their father, they throw down. <laughs> As if the father is in the grave. Ah, he is not there. Soil went back to there. And you can plant, plant a banana there. And it will be sweet. It, <laughs> because we Christians do not believe in the grave. When the trumpet sounds, those who are eaten by ro crocodiles, those who got in those in the sea, at the trick of an eye, will be transformed. And those of us who are alive will be transformed. Together we'll meet the Lord in there. Am I communicating? It doesn't matter whether you are buried or... And I'm not suggesting you don't bury. I'm only saying don't give it meaning it doesn't deserve. So you cannot talk of someone. Talk of his remains. Don't talk of him. That's the same thing. You find in the funeral, people write in the newspaper. And they are writing to the dead. You know my father... You loved me. We, now, how can you talk to a dead person? Haven't you read the verse? And what is even worse, the nation newspaper will charge you. <laughs> you cannot call yourself a Christian and write a message to a dead person at an expense, or even if it was free. Am I communicating? This is God's word. But because we are cultural, we still pray R-I-P. What is R-I-P? What are you doing? You are praying for a dead person to rest in peace. But that was last week when you went, isn't it? And it, the Bible in Hebrews 9 says, it's appointed that the man wants to die. After that, that means praying for a dead person is utter foolishness. It's a waste of, if you invite me in your funeral, on that your father's funeral, you will never hear me praying for him. Christians don't pray for a dead person. They pray for their relatives. Am I communicating? The sermon of the day of the wedding, of, of the funeral, is not to him. It is seeking the relatives to get born again. Am I communicating? All that is to do with, and I'm talking about it because death is one of the places where many Christians are still tied up to their past. So here, we are learning, you cannot be a Christian and talk to a dead person. And number two, dead people don't talk to the living. Don't tell me that your mother visited you last night. That is a demon. Am I communicating? The dead people never, never talk. And here, we learned that the spiritists pretend that they are talking to your relatives. Are we together? The people have said that should never be mentioned among Christians. Are we together? So, when you have a dream, call it the right name. It's a dream, and it's a bad dream. Maybe it should be called, it should be called a nightmare. Because... It is disobeying the scriptures. Are we together? So it's important that we understand that. So I thought I would mention a few of those things. Let's now go back to Acts. We were talking about the death. Now we are back in Acts. But I hope you have, heard, you have, you have, have explained about the death, isn't it? The traditions, some of the Christian traditions are total and biblical. The cultural ones are even worse, but both are wrong. So you need to ask yourself whether you're involved, you are involved in either of the two. Acts 15, now we are in verse 20. So the first thing, criteria is, does this being, is the motive behind this being honoring God or other spirits? If it does, we must stop it. I'm waiting for you to read. Acts 15, verse 20 from NIV. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols. That's number one. From sexual immorality. Up to there. So the first thing is, check, is this thing, is the motive, a worship of another God? Number two, does it involve immorality? A lot of customs have to do with, in other words, I don't know why, some, in some tribes, to plant, you sleep with your wife. To harvest, you sleep again. Now, when you start sleeping 
on the basis of a belief system, it is immorality. Am I communicating? And it means you are not a Christian. Christians are not ordered on sex matters. Am I communicating? The only order is you only sleep with the wife you are married to. Not the one who is friendly. Now, it's very important, even if she, <laughs> you, you are only sleeping with one wife. But by and large, those customs that have to do with morality must stop. So they are being told, follow your normal custom is okay, but not customs that can be described as immorality. Next. From the meat of strangled animals. Number three. Blood. You cannot get involved in slaughtering in a certain way. You know, like if you go to, if you go for, for what is called, it's called, um, what the, the, the kiande is only one item in a ceremony or in a kikui wedding. A kikui wedding is called gurario. Come here. Give me your hand. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, gurara. Can, can anybody interpret what I've said? No, agurara. Say it in English. Umeumia. Apana. That's not kikuyu. No, agurara. What does that say it in English? What is my question in English? Did the blood come? Out. Now you have learned kikuyu. Now you can see it. In other words, gurario is shedding. What I like about kikuyu is they don't hide it. Anybody who goes for gurario must slaughter. Because how can you gurara without blood coming out? And you cannot see Nyake and without doing gurara. Because the boss that gurara is the one that can Nyake and Am I communicating? So you can only participate in gurario on your way to hell. Because that's where they slaughter in a certain way. They even explain this meat can only be eaten by women. This one can be eaten by... It's not meat no more. It's become casual or religious. Now, how can you be involved in a sacrifice and claim to be born again? So you need to understand it is the same within there, isn't it? The in there is the Kamba equivalent of Guradio. Within there, you get the blessings of the parents for your marriage. Now, hear me out. The first reason why you cannot do gradio is because of the slaughter method. The second thing is what you have not read yet. It involves blood. The third thing is that it's a wedding. You can't do two weddings. So if you want to be wedded in church, you cannot do gradio because what replaces gradio is a Christian wedding. So the moment you do gradio, don't waste your money. There's no need of Christian wedding. And you know you're fighting some old people. Some of them are seated here. They married 10 years ago. They are now doing gurario. Did you have a church wedding? So what is this other thing you are doing? Because the moment you have a church wedding, it's fine, isn't it? You are made to vow until death do us, which is a replacement for gurario. Unless you believe the ancestors are better in blessing than Jesus. And you need to understand, in church, we pray to Jesus to bless your marriage, isn't it? In Gurario, we pray to the ancestors. You have to decide which one you are going for. And the same thing among the Karajins, they're having the same customs. The Luos have the same customs. So it's important to ask yourself. Here we are learning the sheep, the goat is being slaughtered, it's strangled, there are systems. You cannot be involved in that. Are we together? So you need to check those customs that involves sacrificing the chicken or whatever, and it has a motive behind it, that must stop. Finally, we are still reading, reading it. A strangled animals, then after that? And from blood. And finally, the part, chapter begin, ends. Any custom that involves shedding of? Blood. Shedding of blood. I finish with this. Why can't I join the Cheke? Or the Kalijin Council of Elders. Of Luo Council of? Or Kiama Kikuyu Council of? I want to give you four or five reasons. Number one is in Acts. All those Council of Elders require you slaughter something. All of them. For the Kalijin, whatever, they always require a ceremony. Are we together? And we have just learned 
you can't do it. Haven't we learned that? It means, even if I'm a politician, I'm a Christian politician, who wants to befriend the people so that they vote for me, if they demand that I give them a goat, am I going to give them? I'll have to believe a miracle that God will give me votes without joining the council. In other words, they, there, may be something, there may be nothing wrong with the courage in council, but the moment they ask for me to give them a goat, the Bible does not allow me. So I either obey the courage in elders or obey Christ. But because I'm a Christian African, my Christianity will stop me giving the, the goat. And that's why you cannot, you cannot find a Christian who joins the council of, although the idea itself is okay, the process that they required cannot allow any Christian to enter it. Number two, when you join the council of elders, they make you vow. And those vows are not biblical vows. They are ancestral spirit vows. So I want to ask you a question. The Bible says, do not be make, make a vow because God will not hold you innocent if you break the vow. Have you read that? So how would you join a group that does not use the Bible and agree to vow? So the reason I cannot become a council of elder person is because I can't agree to vow. You know, the other day someone was explaining to me why it is important to be in the Council of Elders. Because you see, a husband who becomes a member of the Council of Elders knows how to treat the wife. Not just because they are taught how to treat them. They also have vow. They made a, make a vow to look after their wife. In fact, the other day, I was, a Christian was explaining how the husband has improved since he joined the Council of Elders. <laughs> because, you know, earlier, the pastor says, be good to your wives. There they say, if you break it, the ancestral spirits will handle you. And every time you want to beat your wife, you remember. It's very important to understand. <laughs> to understand that we are not suggesting that people who join the Council of Elders are bad. We are only saying they are going to hell. I'm getting the, the, I'm getting the, <laughs> it's important that you understand that. Because some of the things they are doing are actually good. Very good things. But on their way to hell. Because you see, the moment, you are, the, the moment you are making a vow on issues that are not right, they will not happen. Thirdly, the moment you join the Council of Elders, they have leaders who cannot be questioned. Mothamaki, who they are called Adamaki. So I want to ask you a question. Remember the Mothamaki is an old man who understands the cultural customs. He will give you commands not based on the scriptures. If you break them, another goat. You break again, another goat. So you will pay fines forever, isn't it? So how can a Christian who has vowed to be a Christian first, an African later, how can he agree to be under the leadership of somebody who is not biblical? Do you know even the government of Kenya can tell us to do things and will not do it? Am I right? Yeah. That's a, 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 a chapter 13, Romans 13. It's important to understand they are actually put there by God. But when they ask us to do things that we don't agree with, the Bible tells us to refuse, isn't it? So it's important to understand you can't join that council of elders, first because of the blood, then because of the vow, number three, because of the leadership that we are actually talking about. Fourthly and importantly, especially among the Kikuyus, whom I know well, the, when a boy is born, when he's young, the father is supposed to give the goat, to, as goat, to separate him as a leader in the tribe. Then when he is circumcised, when the boy is circumcised, and now he is a man, he is supposed to produce a goat for himself. That's the first goat. When you produce that goat, you become a junior elder. You attend the elders' meetings, but you're not allowed to talk. You're allowed to, to listen. When you go on for some time, they will allow you to produce a second goat. When you produce a second goat, you now become a ruling elder. You can be sent somewhere to, 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 to deal with matters. Because you, you are not a junior elder. At that level, those are the people that become Adamaki. They become the rulers. They can actually sort out tribal issues. When you go older than that, the spirits talk. A mudomogo, some diviner, talk to the elders. And says, Nganga is the next priest. Now, it will not, Nganga will not need to give a, a, a goat. The elders will produce a goat for you. And you'll be set apart to become a priest. Those are the ones who sacrifice facing Mount Kenya, Adamogumo tree. The junior elders are not... You know. So you need to understand. The moment you become a, become a member of the council of elders, it's like in the Anglican system, you become a curate. 
When you stay a little longer, you become a padre. You become a little older, you become a deacon, or whatever, an archdeacon. Finally, you become a bishop. Now, if you have no intention of becoming an archbishop, should you have become even a curate? So, you, the first growth is in preparation of you becoming a priest. Because the seniorest elders are the priests. So, you understand the council of elders is a church leadership. Cultural church leadership. And so, by being in the council of elders, you are a worshiper of another system. See, to restore Mahapo, you don't do such things. Now, I, I wish I had enough time, but I hope I have given enough examples to show you how to test the things. Now, if you had time now, we don't open up to questions, because there are many things I have said which have cost you a question. I want to give you my telephone number so that you can follow me up. You don't say I ran away before I answered your question. May I give you my telephone number? Okay, so that you can, and call me, call me after 8 o'clock in the evening so that I'm not somewhere speaking <laughs> uh, in the evening, just, just call me. 0722-512-307. Let me repeat. 0722-512-307. Ring me in the evening, and you can tell me what about this. I didn't understand why you said this. I disagree with you. What about this other verse? I, I also want to be educated. So if you can show me somewhere where I'm, what I'm saying is not in the Bible, it will also help me so that I can also help others. So that's um, what I'm saying. But I hope, has the afternoon been useful? Yes. Am I forgiven for staying too long? Yes. I could even continue. And I don't want to take the offer. <laughs> Let's now pray. To, <laughs> Let's pray together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, these are easy things to say, but very difficult to practice, especially because when you practice them, it could cause some clan problems some problem with our parents. And sometimes we find it difficult when something is going to hurt our own parents. Lord, we are seeking your help. First of all, to understand what you want us to be, but secondly, to be able to tackle the issues so that even as we live with our tribesmen, we may be the light that will show them the way to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray.